Uh, hello, everyone. Um, what I wanted to go ahead and attempt to do is uh, I'm going to try to tell a uh, traditional Ojibwe uh, story. Um, I'm getting the I'm getting this out of uh, this book here, and uh, this is something that I kind of wanted to do, um, being a writer and a storyteller uh, myself. But I wanted to figure out a good way to be able to do this without, um, well, being uh, respectful to the people who wrote these books because they did a very good job of uh, articulating um, excellent versions of these stories. Uh, the simplest thing that I can say is um, uh, Native American mythology, it's uh, very important to their society. It was um, the manner in which they taught their children and uh, passed on information more than it was a um, blueprint for their religion. Uh, for the Ojibwe, they kind of always um, believed in a general separation. Instead of living in fear and deference of the deities, we live in uh, mutual respect with the deities. If we're good to them, and we uh, show them respect, and we have a good relationship with them, they will do the same for us. Even though it's no one's place to do this, um, making an effort uh, gains an effort in return. So, um, I wanted to uh, try to do this story. Um, the one that I'm the one that I'm attempting at the moment is about um, the cultural hero of the Ojibwe, Nana uh who is more than anything like when you think of the kinds of um, cultural icons in the mythology of a uh, specific group of people. It's usually like um, this uh, idealized version of uh, their beliefs and their moralities, um, an unstoppable uh, warrior, he's very serious, he always does what he's told, but the stories of Nana Bujo take things in a completely different direction. Um, they try to show the idealization of the perfect Ojibwe man by um, having the character do everything wrong. Uh, and be a complete idiot. Uh, so, these stories are kind of very, very unique um, for any kind of world mythology, and uh, they deserve a place here. Um, this particular story, it's not uh, incredibly... It, it's not the best example of a Nana Bujo story, but it, it is a decent um, little story. So, uh, yeah, I guess I'll go ahead and uh, attempt to get right into this. Okay, uh, so as the story goes, um, one day, Nana Bujo is uh, out on a hunting trip, and he decides to camp by a river. And um, one day, he, uh, the, the day after he goes camping, he wakes up, and he looks out, and he thinks the um, the water's a little bit higher in the river. Uh, it can't possibly be much, but uh, he assumes it's just the tide, and he uh, goes out, he collects his firewood, but when he comes back, that water looks like it's a little bit higher than it was when he left, and this uh, throws him off, but he ignores it. So he goes off uh, to gather some... Uh, some more things from the forest, and when he comes back, uh, his his little shelter is completely underwater. And now he's starting to get concerned. Uh, as he wa as he watches, the water just keeps getting higher and higher and higher, and, and it doesn't show any signs of stopping. Um, con uh, in fear and confusion, he starts kind of backing up uh, on the higher and higher ground, but the water just keeps going up and keeps rising. And he's not the only one. Um, the animals are getting panicked too, but there's still uh, more land that he can get up on. Uh, there's a mountain nearby, so he begins to climb the mountain. And yet, the water keeps rising. 
And eventually he's at the top of the mountain and there is nothing but water everywhere he looks and it is still going up. Uh, so now he's getting concerned. Uh, he doesn't know what to do and um, he's panicking. He's looking around for some kind of salvation. And uh, just as he's about to give up, um, he sees a pair of logs floating by. So he grabs the logs and he pulls them up. He uh, takes off his um, his loincloth and he ties these two logs together. And now he has himself a little raft just as the water completely engulfs the top of the mountain. But now that he is uh, safely on the raft, he looks out and he sees all of the animals, um, the bears, the deer, the, the birds, in a complete panic. Um, trying to escape the water. It is everywhere. They're calling out to him for help. Uh, the birds have nowhere to land and um, they they come to his raft and as they land one by one he's he's okay with it. They're small little birds but more and more keep coming and the raft is getting lower and lower into the water and eventually he's forced to knock the birds off um, to save himself. A raccoon comes and tries to get on the raft and he is forced to knock them off calling out to uh, the animals keep calling out to him uh, you know please please help me uh, give me a place to go uh, give me a place to be safe and he can't he has to he has to call back to them no that they you don't understand this raft will not hold us all uh, if you try to come up here with me we're all gonna die and so now he's he's stuck on this raft and he is uh, very upset um, he doesn't know what to do there is nowhere to go in sight and it hurts him very much to have to say no to the the all of the animals who are still calling out to him for help And now Nana Bujo is um, very upset. <coughs> he tries to distract himself from the the pain of um, all of the animals, but uh, the only thing he can think of is what is going to happen to me? Uh, am I going to? It, it, are my logs going to give out and I, I'm going to sink? Is the, am I going to freeze to death all the way up here? Is um, I, am I going to die of starvation? Uh, I mean, uh, starvation, uh, very much, if you've uh, read the story, if you're familiar with the stories of Nana Bujo, this is the one thing that he seems to fear more than anything else, is starving to death. He doesn't want to die um, slowly, knowing that the end is coming. He doesn't want to be in that much, in that kind of pain. Um... So he is terrified, and but he 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 tries to keep his wits about him. He, there has to be something he can think of, and desperately he's pr he's praying to the spirits, to the manitos, uh, the manitoak, to um to offer him some kind of help, some kind of salvation, and nothing comes. There is no divine voice. Uh, there is no sign telling him what to do and where to go. He's just alone. Uh, and so in desperation, something else does occur to him. He remembers the, the creation story, how the, um, the mother goddess uh, sent the turtle down to the bottom, how uh, in the beginning everything was, un was all underwater, and the mother goddess of the, the earth uh, sent the turtle spirit to the bottom of the ocean to bring land to the surface so that uh, all of her children could have a place to live. And so he, he calls out in desperation to the animals, I think I have a plan. I don't know if this will work, but we need someone to go down and to find land. We need um, just a pawful of land is all that we need, and I think I can make this work. I think I can do this. So uh, one by one, the animals... Uh, they they like his plan and one by one they all go down um, so the the bear goes down but he can't hold his breath the water is far too deep he can't make it down that far neither can the deer uh, 
even the, uh, animals who are familiar with water, the otter tries, and he can't get down that far. Uh, to, he can't see. Uh, the beaver doesn't make it. But finally, the muskrat tries. And somehow the muskrat makes it all the way down, and he is gone for such a long time, they, th they fear him dead. But finally, uh, he climbs up onto Nanabujo's raft and drops a ti the tiniest little bit of dirt, uh, about the size of a chestnut, um, in, uh, uh, onto Nanabujo's lap. And uh, just like in the story, Nanabujo remembers uh, the mother spirit uh, took the earth and breathed life into it, and it grew. So in all desperation, in all hope that uh, this is going to work, uh, because it needs to work, uh, he picks up the soil and he breathes all of his hope into it, all of his uh, s strength, uh, every bit of his what he has in him into this soil and then it begins to grow and it grows so large that he can't hold it anymore he puts it down on his raft and falls asleep and when he wakes up he's on an island and uh, the island continues to grow and grow and grow until it uh, takes back the earth and um, makes a, a, a new beautiful world for all of the creatures to live in um, so yeah, that, that is the, the story there. I guess the, uh, the moral of it is, um, kind uh, has something to do with, uh, following your dreams. I know that, um, again, another big theme in, uh, Ojibwe, uh, religion was that, um, the one thing that you, you are supposed to do to, um, show the great, sp the great mystery, uh, the Gichamanito, um, deference for uh, giving you this world and this life is that he instilled in everyone a little bit of talent, something that they can do to make life better for everyone else, uh, no matter how small that is, and uh, it is your duty in this life to, to chase that, to achieve your dreams, and uh, to be someone uh, who to create uh, something out of your talent uh, that can help the rest of the world. Um, so, yeah, clearly I'm not as good of a, uh, public speaker as I am a, uh, <laughs> a writer, but, uh, yeah, I don't know, maybe I'll get better at this. Uh, until then, um, thank you for listening.